you yeah. had some issues about the Trinity. So what's about what is it about? The Trinity? OK, yeah, it's there's clearly a big debate in the world it has been a long time about this. And I think it has a lot to do with semantics. But hey, with who? among who amongst people in the world. And I don't I, I don't know how many of them are Christians or not. The, the big thing that comes up for me and I think would help me get clear is my understanding of what a person is, is they have a personality, a unique personality and a unique personal name. And where'd you get that from scripture? There is only one name under heaven by which man can be yeah, saved. That wasn't my question. Your definition of person, where'd you get that definition from scripture? Because you're not an authority. I'm not an authority. I'm not a prophet. You're not a prophet. Right. So you just gave me your subjective definition. Yeah. Right. Being faithful to scripture, scripture defines terms for you. So where'd you get that a unique personality has a unique name. That did not, yeah, that did not come from uh, scripture. In the world, a person, as opposed to a human being, as a being, a person has a legal personal name. Sure. So it's a secular understanding of the word. So before creation, when there was no creatures, did God name himself? And if so, to who? When there was I no do. creatures. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah, that's I think that word is, that's the first quite the first time I know the, his name or a name or a title. No, that's I don't know. Reference. That's in reference to the revelation. That's what I'm trying to say. You can have God existing mm -hmm. when there are no creatures because God exists when there are no creatures. And mm -hmm. yet he didn't call himself God. He didn't call himself Elohim. These are all human languages. Right. These are languages that are created. So these are human languages that God in his love and mercy condescends and Hallelujah. speaks to us on our level using our language in order to understand who he is so my point is yes it's true that in light of creation naming is very important in order to distinguish one from another and the true god mm. from false gods but unless you believe hebrews and eternal language and god called himself elohim which is hebrew word for god and others or god right. which is english language languages that right. did not exist then that means we have to understand that these names are given for the sake of we creatures to know who this God is and distinguish him, distinguish him from false gods. But coming back to the issue, there are three persons. That's why one is called Father, one is called Son, one is called Holy Spirit. That's precisely the point. So I guess there's my question. For a righteous Trinitarian, that's the way I'm labeling it, unless you correct me, a righteous Trinitarian, how is, it, how is a person defined? First of all, we derive our definition from what we see in Scripture. So how do I define it? Well, I see the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. Spirit's not the Father. So that's the first fact we establish. So they're not the same self, whatever term you want to use. Then okay. we discover that the Father is in communion with the Son. He speaks to the Son. He's in love with the Son. The Son is in right. love with Him, communion with Him, so they can communicate and express love for one another. We also see that the Spirit is sent by the Son from the Father. And we're told in John 16, 13, the Spirit will only speak what He hears. So that means He's hearing from others. So that means He's not the Father, not the Son. Right. He hears from them. So now, if I see the Father is not the Son, Son is not the Spirit, right. Spirit's not the Father, but they have communion with one another. They love one another. So then, what term do I have in my limited human language? Oh, okay. To describe how these three are not the same self. They can speak to one another, have love one, love one another. One can send the others, or two of them can send the one. For example, Father sends a Son, sends a Spirit, Son sends a Spirit. What term in my finite temporal right. language would best describe these three? Person. There you go. I see that. Yeah, yeah. So they're all omniscient. However, they communicate with one another, although it's not due to a lack of omniscient, uh, omniscience, but they're doing it for another reason. Well, even before creation, remember, if they're not the same self, that means in creation, they were in love with one another and fellowship mm -hmm. one another, but you're dealing with a being that's unlike anything creation. Right. And you and I, because we're creatures, we cannot help but think in terms of space, place, and time. We just can't help it. Right. That's my limit. Right it's kind of our prison for now. Yeah, so this is the problem. Because we are creatures bound to temporal acts that I, I'm speaking and I stopped speaking. So there was a moment I didn't speak and I began speaking. Mm -hmm. And I speak to you and I'll let you speak to me. This is how we see reality. So then now we're trying to understand a God who's not limited the way you, you and I are. Right. We cannot help then envision their relationship as temporal that, oh, the Father begins speaking and the Son begins speaking. And that's the problem limitation of human language yeah so the language that the word expresses itself in the holy scriptures the bible to us and those languages being themselves in this duality cannot be 
it's got to be accurate. It's all good because it says it is good. But at the same time, for example, if it, it uses some words like he came from within God or he came, he was in him, that, that doesn't make any sense outside of time and space because how can you be in or out? Right. Especially if God it makes no happen. sense. Especially if God exists when there was no space or place or time or when no space or place. That means God is a kind of being. He doesn't require space to exist. He doesn't need place to exist. That means he doesn't have a body. He can assume a form, assume a body. He can appear in visible form. He can appear right. in a body. And we believe Jesus became man. So he actually became human and has an actual physical body. But if he creates time, space, place, that means God is a kind of being, doesn't need space, place. Well, the only kind of being that doesn't need space or place is a being that's bodiless, shapeless. Yes. So then even when I say in and out, again, yeah. I'm a creature. In me, meaning something is in another, like here, materially, mm -hmm. waters, in, but that's not how God is. Right. So language right. by its very nature is going to fall short. He has the same, God has this, the same mind. He doesn't change. Even when we say change, we, we have to understand God is not a static, immobile being. If so, then. If he is right. static and immobile, then there would be no creation because recreation means that God at one point was in creating and then created. I see. And then when he interacts with you and I and speaks to us, well, if he doesn't, if you define change to mean he's motionless and immobile, then how mm -hmm. can he have communication with us? So how when I'm reading, time, right? When I'm reading the scripture here and it uses these words like that, yeah. I have to, I have to consider what it's, what it's. Uh, yep. it's limit. And so, which keeps me humble and my mind open to him. I For, think. Here. But, For example, God has already prepared you. He mm -hmm. repeats this ad infinitum throughout the scriptures. So that's what I brought up. He already told you when mm -hmm. you come to scrutinize me, realize I'm beyond your comprehension. Like Job five, nine, who does the great. And the oh yeah. <laughs> Wonders without number or here. I call this the Job, uh, Job, uh, checkmate. Yep. Not only in Job, it's all throughout scripture, but I'm just showing yeah. you. Here again, Job 36, 26. Look, God is great. We do not know him. Now, what it means we don't know him doesn't mean you can't know him personally and know he loves you and he exists. And I relate. Yeah. It means you will not fully fathom him. It says, nor can the number of his ears be searched out. Right there. Or after a voice roars, he thunders with his majestic voice. He does not restrain them when his voice is heard. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things that we cannot comprehend. The Bible is quite clear. There's only one infinite, uncreated, almighty being we call God who yes. created all things, sustains all things. There is not a second. So it's only one God. Yes. So the word Trinity is simply a term trying to describe in a succinct way what the Bible right. says. There's only one God. That's the unity in the Trinity. Try unity. Here, yeah. There's, that's the last question I had for you if you had time was – uh, where did this triune thing come from? From scripture. That's oh, is that I mean. also? No, I mean, mean opposed to the word trinity. The term. No, not the term. Because you use a lot of terms not found in scripture. So it's the Bible doesn't say you can only use the, the words of scripture. Because if that's the case, then you shouldn't be speaking English. Because the Bible's written Hebrew, Aramaic, and right. Greek. So speak right. Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. Obviously, yeah. that's... No, I, I studied chemistry. I was a chemist. So, all, you know, chemistry came out of alchemy. I should stop chemistry, right? Yes. So you get my <laughs> no. point. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So the so, Bible, the word triune that's used. Some of these churches they use the word Trinity, and other ones kind of shun that word and they adopt the word triune. Yeah, try because triune is simply Trinity is two words. Tri unity and it's being condensed. Triunity mm. is the same thing as saying Trinity because if I you ask what a Trinity, tri unity means unity. So. If, there's so only if I one walk God, into a church that's doing saying one of those opposed to the other, doesn't it matter. doesn't confront me then. No, it doesn't matter because they're still referring to the one God who's three persons. So that's why okay. unity, one, try three, Father, Son, Spirit. Now, why the three? Because if you read the Bible carefully, Father is the one true God. But then the Son is described as the one true God. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is described as one true God. Yes. But the Father is not the Son, as we established. Son is not the Spirit. Spirit's not the Father. But they're not three right. gods. These three are one. Yeah, so then what term can we come up with? Well, three, tri, mm -hmm. one, unity, tri-unity, trinity. 